Hi, in this, welcome to chapter four, and in this lecture we are going to look a little bit more deeply at net present value um, and internal rate of return, and we are going to look to see um, how they might rank projects differently from one another and why that happens. So typically, if a project has a positive net present value, it also has an internal rate of return greater than the discount rate. If a project has a negative net present value, it's got an internal rate of return lower than the discount rate. So on any given project, net present value and internal rate of return tend to agree with one another. But when you're comparing two projects and you can only choose one of them, sometimes, depending on the timing of the cash flows, sometimes net present value can tell you to pick one project and internal rate of return can show you to pick another project. The reason that is usually is based on the timing of cash flows. Projects with cash flows that occur in the distant future are more serious, are more sensitive to discount rate. So what we can look at and what we will look at now is an example of when that happens and how whether or not these projects, whether you should choose project A or project B is going to hinge on the net present value, not the IRR, but it's going to also depend on the discount rate and how certain you are that your discount rate is correct. So let's look at an example. Project A and Project B are two projects that require a $1,000 outlay of cash right now. That's how much it costs to invest. And then they each have a series of cash flows that occur at the end of years one through five. Let's start by calculating their net present value. The net present value is always equal to the initial outlay plus the present value, which we find using Excel's NPV function, of the rest of the cash flows discounted at a given rate of return. Let's look at project B's net present value. So the first thing we might notice is that both of these projects have a positive net present value, but that project B has a higher net present value and that based on our criteria for which project to accept, if we could choose them both, we would, but if we can only choose one, we're gonna choose project B. And in this example, let's say that these projects are mutually exclusive, which means we have to pick one, we can't pick both. Let's see what IRR tells us. IRR of project A is 26%, where IRR of project B is 20%. So this is one of those cases where if we're listening to the IRR criteria, if that's the criteria we're using, we would choose project A. Well, the holy grail of finance is that net present value rules. You choose the one with the highest net present value because that's what maximizes your wealth. We don't maximize our internal rate of return. What we're really concerned about is how much money we have, right? What it's going to do to our bottom line over time. And that's most accurately represented by the NPV. But let's for a minute take a look at the NPV profiles of these. As you might remember from an earlier chapter, an NPV profile shows how the net present value of an investment changes as a function of the discount rate. So let's look at two percentage intervals equals A22 plus 2%. Really? Come on. And let's look between 0% and 24%. That's fine. In order to tidy this up, I'm going to get rid of a couple of those decimal places. All right. So I'm going to create the project profile, the NPV profile of project A, then I'm going to do project B, and I'm going to put them in a graph, and we can discuss what we found. So to do my NPV profile, I'm going to enter the formula only once for each project, and then I'm going to drag the formula down. And in order to do that, I use an absolute reference for everything, for all of the cash flows, and a relative reference for my discount rates. And then I right-click in that bottom corner 
and it drags them down. Let's do the same thing for project B. It's equal to our initial cash outlay, given an absolute reference, plus my net present value at different interest rates. So I'm going to leave that as a relative reference of these future cash flows, and I'll give those an absolute reference. Right click in that corner, and those will come down. Those will be easier to see if I put them in a graph. All right, here it comes. I'm going to use this opportunity really quickly to go over how we're going to format graphs. So I start by clicking this box up here, the layout one, and I start by changing the title. I've got a long title, so I'm going to drop my font down to 14, and I'm going to call it NPV of two projects at different discount rates. On my y-axis, I have the title NPV, and on my x-axis, I have the title discount rate. I'm going to get rid of this legend, although it seems like it would be a good chart to use a legend with. I have over here Project A labeled in blue, and it corresponds to the blue line, and Project B labeled in red. And that will allow my chart space to be used more for the chart. So you can see two things that kind of are my pet peeves. One is that there's all this space between 1,000 and 1,200. Maybe that chart should end somewhere lower, like at 1,100. Also, our lowest value is negative 99, but our chart goes to negative 200. Similarly, we're looking at discount rates up here all the way to 30% when our highest one is 24. So we want to remove all of that extra space and just look at what our chart for, for areas that we actually have values. So I'm going to format this axis. I'm in the scale column. My minimum is going to be negative 100. And my maximum is going to be 1100. And instead of looking at every $200, 100, 300, 500, let's look at $100 increments. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to make this a little taller. Now let's go down here to our x-axis, our horizontal axis. We're going to format that axis so that the maximum is going to be 25% expressed as a decimal. And then instead of looking at 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, we're going to look, let's try 2's and see if that's too crowded. Let's try 3's. All right, that looks better. It gives us a little bit more information to look at. All right, well, what do we see? We see that up until a certain discount rate, Project B has a higher net present value. This would be Project B, and its NPV is greater than that of Project 1 all the way until we get close down here. It looks like somewhere close to 12%. Let's see here, at 12% B is higher, and at 14% A is higher. So somewhere between 12 and 14%, these two points cross and we call that a crossover point because at discount rates less than the crossover point, Project B is going to have a higher net present value, and at discount rates above the crossover point, Project A is going to have a higher net present value. At our discount rate of 5%, Project B has a higher net present value, so we would choose Project B. But if we were had a higher discount rate, you know, like 15%, Project a would have a higher net present value and we would choose project A. So the crossover rate is the point where our NPVs of the two projects are the same and on either side of that project, I'm sorry, on either side of that crossover rate, the project that has a higher NPV is different. How do we calculate the exact value of that crossover point? We use that concept of differential cash flows that we introduced earlier in last week's section. And the crossover point can be calculated by finding the IRR of the differential cash flows. If you're interested in mathematically and learning why that is, there's a section in the book. But for now, we're just going to suffice it to say that it's so. So to calculate the differential cash flows, I say that the contents of that cell is going to equal Project B's cash flows minus Project A's cash flows. So in year one, there's $0 in difference between the cash flows. In year two, 
Project B's would have an inflow of 100, whereas Project A's is going to have inflow of 500. Project B's is 400 less, All right? So this is going to be, it's going to show us how they compare to one another. So it shows us that in the first year they're the same, but in years one and two, Project B's are lower, right? You're going to have to give up a certain amount of money to have Project B, but after that, Project B is going to provide higher cash flows. Well, our crossover point is equal to the internal rate of return of these differential cash flows. 12.1%. And that makes sense because we were able here to identify that it was somewhere around 12%. So the crossover point for these two projects is at 12%. And what that tells us is that if our discount rate is less than 12%, Project B is going to have a higher NPV, and if our discount rate is greater than 12.1%, Project A will. As long as we're fairly certain that our discount rate is 5%, we're going to want to go with Project B. However, when you're looking at a crossover point or a couple of um, projects that have a crossover point like this, you're going to want to say, how certain are we of our discount rate, right? What rate am I going to get on my loan, or what's the rate at the bank that I would be using if I didn't invest in one of these projects? Because the discount rate is going to change your choice of investment between which one is better and which one is worse. So when, when Project A and Project B are recommended differently by NPV and IRR, you follow the NPV guideline. I hope this tutorial was helpful, and if you have any questions, feel free to, give me, to send me an email.